All right. What up? What up? What up? <laughs> I, I, I've realized I've grown. I've, I've started saying this in every video because it's true. I never know how to start these videos. So, you know, it's me, your boy, Cousin Truck, coming at you one more time with another vehicle review. Now, I know you've seen the thumbnail, so you already know what kind of vehicle it is. But before we get started, I just want to point out once again, I'm down in beautiful Miami, Florida, 305 Dade County, uh, down in Wynwood. And I guess this guy right here is one of the most popular people down here in Wynwood. Uh, if you ever get a chance, if you ever visit Miami, definitely Google map Wynwood. If you're a person who loves artwork and love, I guess I'll say graffiti, um, you definitely will not be disappointed. But let's get to the review because that's not what we're here for today. And here we have it. It's the 2022, or it might even be a 2023 Cadillac CT5. Yeah, I'm actually not sure what year the car is because when I look in the glove compartment, there wasn't a uh, there wasn't a manual in there, but I did see a manual in the trunk. So <laughs> during this video, we're gonna find out what year this car actually is. And I guess obviously they put the CT5 on the back. I know this emblem has changed a little bit over the years, but it looks nice now. And this is actually a 350T. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I'll Google it and possibly try to add the description in the video to describe what that is. Obviously there you have the Cadillac logo. And this here is the rear view of the vehicle. It's got dual tailpipes. One thing I want to point out real quick before I forget. Only thing that's weird to me about this vehicle is the backup lights. Do you see that? The backup light is down there at the bottom. Now, why Cadillac decided to do that, I have no idea. But if you're used to seeing the backup lights over here, sometimes you might get confused realizing it's way down here. So, but that's just something I guess Cadillac was trying to be a little different with. For me personally, these Cadillacs are beautiful cars. So say if I had to get a Cadillac car, this CT5, I just love the front end of it. And it also has those little baby lightsabers, which I love so much. I love the headlights. But, and I will definitely say this car for me resembles the Escalade in some very small ways, but obviously it's a car and it's a beautiful car at that. You know, if I owned this car, all of that chrome would be blacked out and even the emblem on the front would be blacked out. Because for me personally, I love that blackout look. And I also love the, the contrast of a black and white car. So that's just my own personal opinion. It's very distinctive. And when you see a Cadillac coming down the road, you recognize and know that it is a Cadillac. This right here is the side profile of the vehicle. And the one thing I do like about these is the little swoop. If you look back here in the back, I love, I love vehicles that have that little swoop to it. Uh, you know, it's not like straight like the front. It kind of swoops down in the back, almost like it wants to be a hatchback. But I guess this is just the design of this one. And I actually love that design and like the fact that the front end is longer than the rear end. Now, for some people, that can definitely affect the trunk space. But as far as a look, I actually like that look. And to me, it's like I think they're taking pointers from the uh, Audi. Because I know Audis also have that same swoop rear end effect to them. And I see this vehicle here actually comes with 18-inch uh, wheels. Which nowadays, 18-inch wheels, I mean, on here, it doesn't look too bad. But most cars come with at least 20-inch wheels. So, I mean... With this one, I guess it has the smaller wheels that have better performance. And I must definitely say this vehicle performs very well on the highway. Very well. Yeah, when I was on the highway, I got those 18s up to about, you know, I got it up there. And I would just say car just drives like you're riding on the cloud. So smooth. And maybe because it's brand new, because this vehicle only has 5,000 miles on it. So maybe that's another reason why it drives so well on the highway and around town so now let's uh try to get into the vehicle yeah it definitely has a nice little chrome accent here above the door it's funny because it also has a little cadillac symbol there and as i said before most cars you have to pull the door handle in order for it to open 
on these Cadillacs, you actually, there's a little knob in the back. You push that down and that is how the doors open. And so this here is the interior of the vehicle. And man, let me just tell you, very nice vehicle, very nice. I myself have gotten used, because my personal vehicle has a black interior, so I'm always prone to like a black interior more than this cream colored or beige interior that this one has. But this interior of this vehicle is very fancy, very luxurious, and you know, it's a Cadillac, so it's almost like, what do you expect? Nice very clean and I almost want to say simple but definitely very luxurious and so a lot of these vehicles do like a little performance when you turn the car on so let's see let me see if I can get it to do it in this vehicle let's see it's saying start yeah that time I couldn't get it to do it let me try again Yeah, this time it won't do the little show and dance, but this is the dash. Uh, this is probably at least a maybe 10 inch screen here. And so yes, yeah, this here is the dashboard. As you can see, the vehicle can get up to 160. This is the infotainment center. Um, I guess one thing I want to put on in this vehicle is the different modes. I, I hate to admit that when I had to escalate, I forgot to go through the modes of the vehicle. But this one has, you know, let me show you. As you push the button, the different modes show different things on the screen. So there's a sports mode, snow and ice mode, my mode, which I guess once you go to my mode, this screen over here changes. And I'm assuming you can adjust what you want to happen uh, under my mode. My, the mode that I like the most is definitely the sports mode. And yeah, as you do that, it shows over here that the screen over here also adjusts. And to remind you, in, you're in sport, sports mode, the little flag comes on. And I must admit, when this vehicle is in sports mode, it definitely, uh, it definitely feels like you're in sports mode. Uh, definitely easy to get on and off exits. And that's one reason why I enjoy coming down to Miami to test out some of these vehicles because you know you really get the you really get a real feel for what a lot of these vehicles can do down here in this traffic in the 305 let me see if i can see what the gas mileage is on this because that is still very important because gas is going up i see right now i got 274 miles into empty uh oil life tires look good let's see engine boost let me see. Okay, this vehicle only has about 6,000, about 6,100 miles on it. But what is, let me see what the, uh, trying to figure out what is the gas mileage. Or how many miles per gallon am I getting right now? I can't even find it. I don't even see it. Um, I'm not sure. It won't tell me right now. That's very interesting. But uh, it tells me the fuel range, but it won't tell me, won't tell me how many miles per gallon. Oh, there it is. You know what? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm crazy. You got a miles per gallon right here. So yeah, it actually has been averaging about 24 miles per gallon, and I believe that because because right now gas isn't that expensive, and so yeah, I think it only cost me like 37 dollars to fill this vehicle up, and I was very happy about that. I was like, man, see, this is why I need a car this size because. It don't take a whole lot of uh, gas to fill it up. Uh, here we have just a regular, uh, normal backup camera. Nothing too fancy with the backup camera. Uh, no kind of warning bells or anything like that. And so of course this here is all touch screen and does different things. And now that I've rented, since this is like my third or fourth time renting the Cadillac, I now realize these buttons here is where you control the temperature one thing I don't like about some of these cars is they all have this automatic off mode. I always myself personally turn that off because that auto stop always makes me upset and I always feel like the car is malfunctioning. 
Here you have your cup holders. I definitely just found out this cup holder does not work for my one and a half liter Zephyr Hills water. So that's kind of a epic fail. There's also a cup holder over here on the side and it won't fit there either. So for right now, I just kind of sit it in the seat. This right here is also the infotainment center control. Like if you don't feel like touching the screen up here, you can actually come here and sort of do some of the same stuff. Control a lot of the things down here. This here is the glove compartment. Now you guys know I am a sucker for space. And I'm very disappointed with how little amount of space this 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 compartment has. I mean, yeah, I could fit my whole hand in there, but as you can see, it's not even that deep. And you can't really put a lot of stuff in there. Not saying that you would need to or want to, but it's just if you do need to, you definitely do not have that option. It's also interesting to me that this opens from just the driver's side. It's as if they don't want the passenger to be able to go in here. I don't even think there's a knob for the passenger to open it. Yeah, you can only open it on the driver's side, and it only opens from the driver's side, which is also kind of interesting. But, you know, regardless of it not having enough storage space, overall, you know, it's, it's good enough. At least for me, it's good enough for the little road trip I'm on. But if it was my own personal vehicle, I would sort of get a little annoyed not having a whole lot of storage space. And so now, uh, let me try to do the back seat test. I can already tell the back seat of this isn't too big, and I haven't tried to sit in it yet because I wanted to catch my natural reaction to finding out about this uh, back seat. All right. Yeah, man, the sun is finally coming out. They say it's always sunny in Philadelphia, but I can guarantee you it feels like it's always sunny in Miami also. I'm gonna try to get in the rear seat. Yeah. Um. <laughs> all right. <laughs> there is an issue. Me being six foot two, 290 pounds. Um, as you saw, I just kind of hit my head even trying to get back here. But right now, since I was sitting in the driver's seat, this is how much space I have. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah. You can see right now where my leg is. And I can't even get my feet, I can't even get my feet inside the car yet. So, uh, yeah. If you're somebody who's 6'2", you cannot have another person who is 6'2", sit behind you in this vehicle. I, I would have to rate this as a small back seat because I literally can't even get back here. So I'm gonna try to adjust the passenger seat and see if, just to try to get in the back and see if I can get on, on that side, right? I did finally just make it into the rear seat. And I will say overall, it feels comfortable, but it's definitely not meant for a full size, of, well, I'm not gonna say a full size adult, but definitely not meant for a big man like myself. Because although it does feel comfortable, I will admit, but yeah, a small child or somebody who's maybe under five feet will have to sit in front of me because they definitely would have to pull that seat up because I just, nah, I couldn't fit back here. But overall, it's comfortable. Like sitting back here right now, it is actually very comfortable. Like it's not that bad. It doesn't feel that bad. I do see back here they have little AC vents. Look like they have, you know, your AC, DC plug. Another little USC charger. And that's about it back here. Uh, this is a view from the of the front from the back. And I mean, overall, yes. I mean, a very beautiful vehicle. Very elegant and very nice. Um, I definitely like it. Very nice. The leather feels really, really good. It smells good also. And overall, you know, it's a Cadillac. So it's a very nice vehicle. All right, so enough of being stuck back here in the rear. Let me go, let's now go and check out the trunk space. And let's see if I can get out of this vehicle without busting my head. Um, Like I say, the back scoop swoops down. So if you see, it's interesting how, like I say, the rear of this vehicle swoops down and the window actually seems very small back here, but it's a nice snug fit. And like I said, for somebody who is not six foot, this could be okay. Like this could work. So, 
And in order for me to get out, I have to even kind of lean myself to the side and things like that. So yeah, that was uh, very interesting just now. I was able to fit back there with this much space, but then unfortunately, whoever's sitting up front would only have that much space, which isn't a whole lot unless it's a very tiny child. A lot of times I struggle trying to figure out how to open up the trunk, but I've learned over the years, you know, just reach under here somewhere. There's always a knob. And this here is the trunk space. Now, this is kind of a solo trip for me. So I got my one big suitcase that I put my stuff in, especially my laptop. I have my other little small travel bag. I have my cleaning supplies because I always clean the vehicles whenever I rent them. But as you can see, that's about it. That is all the trunk space right there that you're gonna get. If you need any more bags to fit in there, uh, good luck. Obviously, if you do go somewhere, you just take your cleaning kit out. You can add a second suitcase in there and some smaller bags, but that's about it. So if you're planning on going on a trip in this vehicle, uh, plan and pack wisely. Now over here, let's see, this right here is, the, for some odd reason, they put these uh, in the rear instead of putting it up front. But let's see, okay, yeah. So this here is actually a 2022 CT5. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this up in the front in the glove compartment. So at least the next person will know what year this vehicle is. So you know guys, overall, this has been a very fun vehicle to drive. It's a luxury vehicle, it's a Cadillac. And you know, people, <laughs> the only thing that's interesting about these type of vehicles sometimes is when you pull up to places, people assume that you got a little bit of money because you driving around in a caddy. Sometimes they don't realize it's a rental. And a lot of times it ain't none of their business, so I ain't gonna tell them it's a rental. I mean, you know, you can think what you want, just don't ask me for too much money. But yeah, I'm down, still down in the 305. Like I say, down in Wynwood, beautiful Wynwood, down in Miami, Florida, near downtown. And I'm getting ready to head over to South Beach to kind of ride around, bend some corners, waste some gas. If you have a vehicle that you would like Cousin Truck with his normal man's normal human reviews uh definitely feel free to hit me up uh, just keep in mind i would definitely need to keep the vehicle for like a day or two just to really test it out and you know just kind of get my real and my actual opinion about it and so as usual i thank you guys for always checking out the videos please continue to like comment share subscribe and all that other good old-fashioned stuff and i will see you guys on the next one Peace. That's recording. You do it. You the one who wants to do it. It's you the one who asked me to record you? Know what you got to say? Uh, why are you putting that so cool? You said subscribe, leave a like, and share the video. Alright, that was